Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> All right, Taylor. So we just got off Yukon Striker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know your coaster counts way higher than mine. What did you think of Yukon Striker? <laughs> it's but you know, uh, I think it's a great fit for this park. I mean, uh, the, I know we were talking. This park gets huge attendance numbers, so uh, you have a lot of people who maybe don't get to as many parks. So I think this is a huge spectacle for him. And one of my I'm, my first impression of this was when we were driving up to the park and you just see the skyline and now seeing a dive coaster there. It really filled in a gap in their skyline. So I'm always looking for those kind of things that are like visually pleasing. So I loved it. I I mean, this area is a huge complete turnaround from how it used to be. I haven't been here since 2017 and it was not the area I enjoyed being in. I was I walked through and I was like, all right, there's nothing here. I'm gonna go somewhere else. And so now it's like a place I actually wanna hang out. It looks great, I, I think it's nice. All right, so with your coaster count and the places you've been to, the best restraints on Yukon Striker, how do they compare? You know, they're definitely better than Val Ravens and that is an improvement for sure. Um, one thing I was, they don't give you as much airtime as the standard uh, over the shoulder restraints that you'd find on like Sheikha or Griffin or any of the dive coasters in Europe except for Valkyria. So, uh, these, one thing I liked about it is when you're hanging over the drop, they have a little give. So, especially if you're in the front row, you do kind of scoop forward a bit. They definitely, they do not give as much air uh, in those weightless moments though as maybe I was hoping. All right. Um... So, um, with dive coasters being such a controversial coaster model in the coaster community, if there was one element or something you could change about Yukon Striker, what would it be? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say more stuff after the mid-course. Uh, right now, it does a little drop, uh, helix, and brake run. I think that up until the mid-course, it's very solid. I wouldn't really change anything, uh, especially with how it works in the park. And I realized that they were tight on space, so they probably couldn't really fit much else other than a helix. So I'm not like mad about it or anything, but it would be nice to see maybe a more uh, complete ending. Alright, um, so I'm not going to ask you where uh, you would rank this with other dive coasters because I'm yeah. sure you're going to say that in your video, yeah. but where would you rank this in terms of the coaster lineup at Ken's Wonderland as a top yeah. three? I'd, I'd say uh, number three. Number yeah. three? Um, I mean, Leviathan and Behemoth, is, uh, I, I think those are going to be still most people's favorite rides in the park. Uh, this really fills a gap in their lineup that they really needed because after Behemoth it was a pretty big drop off. You know, uh, everything else was what I like to call filler coasters. It's a great supporting lineup. This gives them, you know, a nice top three, nice big attraction that I think the park needs. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're yeah, super sure busy, thing. so no, enjoy the park. It's great. This is awesome. Thanks. <laughs> awesome.